Here we have a chapter five test review. Lesson 5.9 is not on this test. These questions don't necessarily go in the exact order of what we learned. Uh, and I won't go over every single question in this review. Here we go. Number one and two says solve each equation by taking square roots. Well, in order to do that, we need to get the squared term by itself. Remember, this only works when there's a quadratic term and a, a constant, no linear term. So in number one, we would just add six to both sides. n squared equals one. And to get rid of a squared, we take the square root. Make sure you put plus or minus one. And also, you do want to simplify. In this case, the square root of one is just one. So we have plus or minus one. We'll do number two. It's very similar, although the square, the quadratic term is already isolated. We take the square root. Make sure we put plus or minus. This is the square root of negative 59. Well, negative 59, um, we can't take the square root of a negative, so we definitely have an i, so square root of 59i. And 59 does not have any uh, perfect square factors, so it can't be simplified at all. 3 through 5 is multiplying. So here we just distribute. It's 12b plus 28. Number 4, we also distribute. Uh, we do have a, a way to remember it. We use the FOIL acronym, and we multiply first. So that is 48n squared plus 40n plus 18n. And finally, 3 times 5, our last is 15. And then we look for like terms. These have uh, just a n to the first, so we can add those. We have 48n squared plus 58n plus 15. And this last one, each term in the first factor needs to be multiplied by each term in the second. So we're going to do 8a times all three of these. So that is 40a cubed plus 24a squared plus 16a. And then negative 1, we think of that as a negative 1, needs to be multiplied by all three of these. So we have minus 5a squared, minus 3a, minus 2, and then we look for like terms. There's no other x or a cubed, so it's 40a cubed. There's an a squared and an a squared, so that is 19a squared. We have a 16a and a negative 3a, which is 13a. And then finally, we have the negative or minus 2. Next group of questions say solve by factoring. Solve by factoring. So we're going to do that for each one. And the first two, these are actually already factored for us. So we don't have to do any factoring. And what we do is remember the zero property of multiplication that if two things multiply together to equal zero, one of those things has to be equal to zero. So either p minus 7 equals zero or p minus 3 equals zero. On this left one, we add 7 to both sides and we get p equals 7 or p equals 3. And we can write our solution set as 3 comma 7. Similar on number seven, so we'll skip to number eight. This time we do need to factor. Uh, the first thing we look for are common factors and there are none. We also wanna make sure zero is on one side and so now we factor, so we put two groups of parentheses. We think, how do we get a squared? Well, that's an a times an a. To get a negative eight, we need one positive and one negative. And then our factors of 8 are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. So it looks like this will be an 8 and a 1. We can check. That's 8a minus a, which is 7a. That's what we want. And now we're back to looking like the form of number 6. So either a plus 8 equals 0 or a minus 1 equals 0. So a equals negative 8 or a equals 1. 
And so we can write our solution set negative eight comma one. Uh, number nine is similar to number eight. Number 10 does not have a zero on the right side. So we need to make sure we subtract B from both sides, which gives us B squared minus, sorry, plus 14B plus 48 equals zero. We have a lot of factors of 48, one in 24, sorry, one in 48, two in 24, three and 16, four and 12, uh, six and eight. And so it looks like this is gonna be B plus eight times B plus six. If we think through solving those, B will either equal negative eight or negative six. Number 11 and 12 are different because both of those have coefficients other than one for the quadratic term. So let's try number 11. There's no common factors, so we'll do two groups of parentheses. We have an 8x squared, and so we can either you do 1 and 8 or 2 and 4. Um, Usually I would probably start with a 2x and 4x, but it was looking like this. I have to get to a 41, so I actually think it's going to be an 8x and an x. We need both plus because this is a positive and this is a positive. And then it looks like if I multiply, yeah, this should work. 8 times 5 is the 40x, and then 1 times x is... 1x or 41x. And now we haven't seen one of these yet, but this is where it does help to write 8x plus 1 equals 0. We subtract 1. And divide by 8. And so x equals negative 1 eighth. And then over here, x plus 5 equals 0. So x equals negative 5, because we subtract 5 from both sides, and our solutions are negative 5, negative 1 eighth.